In this video, I'm going to be giving Kylian Mbappe Cristiano Ronaldo's career, and it all starts here at Sporting Lisbon. He's going to spend one year here building up his potential and his credentials, and then he's going to be moving to Manchester United next season, unless he gets a transfer away himself. And that's how this simulation will work. Mbappe will either follow Ronaldo's career path, which makes Manchester United his move next year, or he transfers away somewhere himself, in which case I'm not going to influence that. I'm also simulating with Derby so I don't affect his career at all. Let's go to the end of year one and see how Mbappe did in his maiden year. First year is through, and an 18-year-old Kylian Mbappe, potential to be special, 18 years old, 79 overall. He's played this season, though, basically the whole year, and he's the third top scorer with 12 goals at 18 years of age. However, this will be the year he gets his move to Manchester United. What about Sporting, though? They are currently top of the Liga Portugal, but it's a really close race for the league title, and obviously they're not in the Champions League or anything like that. But there's one game to go against Ferenc. Here we go. Massive game for Mbappe. If they win this game they win the league can they do it 3-0 win and Mbappe doesn't score a brace for Edwards and Pedro G scores as well in his first season Mbappe has already won the Portuguese league that's a brilliant sign for the 18 year old striker and he's going to go on to Manchester United to hopefully bigger and better things in terms of value Kylian Mbappe is worth 49 million the second most valuable player on the entire team and now he's gone let's send him to United first transfer done the young and bright Kylian Mbappe has joined Manchester United but there's a big problem he is like the third best striker on the team team because of course Hoyland is here but Rashford is also here and he's playing up front and even if you put him out on the wing Hoyland takes a spot up top and Mbappe is going to be the third string striker on this team how is he going to get into this team that's a problem for him to figure out himself we'll have to find out top scorer this year for Man United was Marcus Rashford by the way 32 goals for him he's having a really good simulation actually it's going to be really tough for Mbappe to knock him off his perch let's see how Mbappe has coped with all of this competition it looks like Hoyland might be starting but Mbappe is up to an 83 so he's gone up what plus what four overall which is really good but crucially it's not really enough to play games let's see how he's doing look at all these strikers they've also signed Elio Wahi oh my god and Lautaro Martinez oh dear so strikers that now potentially start instead of Kylian Mbappe are Elio Wahi Rasmus Hoyland Lautaro Martinez I mean maybe Anthony Martial and also Marcus Rashford as well five strikers that may be starting in front of him also this Alarcon guy but he's like terrible Mbappe zero games all year but he's still gone up four overall maybe next year if he goes up four overall again he'll probably surpass Wahi Hoyland I mean Martial as well but I mean Lautaro Martinez is going to be very tough to beat he still has five more years at Manchester as well unless he gets a transfer of his own how is he going to cope with this issue Manchester United though are looking like they're in Champions League places which is big but they haven't actually won any trophies whatsoever and they're not in the Champions League either pretty average season for Manchester United what's Mbappe going to do of course when Ronaldo first came to Manchester United he wasn't starting straight away Mbappe is kind of the same but Mbappe could take an extra year or two to break into this Manchester United team and just as quickly as they've come they've gone for whatever reason Lautaro Martinez is nowhere to be found where's he gone he's gone to Atletico Madrid that's a really weird one he went to United for a single year okay anyway that means Mbappe's here and I believe he's starting ahead of Rasmus Hoyland they also have the likes of Gavi now signed for this team Rudiger and Hakimi as well but now Mbappe's playing games let's have a look at how many he's played this year okay wow he's the second top scorer but he's only played half the games that like Marcus Rashford has for example 35 five goals for Rashford off the wing is insane. Mbappe 19 and 23 is nuts. So he's only just become the starting striker. Who else has got games up front? Nobody else really. Looks like none of the attackers have got games at all. What's happened here? Mason Mount started out on the wing. Rashford's been starting up front and Gavi may be starting out on the other wing. Vatinha starting midfield with Fred and maybe Eriksen. That's insane. So when they're lining up for a game, this is what their team actually looks like. Actually, Eriksen plays here. That's insane. Feels like they're trying to do everything they can to put Mbappe on the bench. But still, he's trained hard enough he's actually trained so hard that he's gone up four overall again while only playing half the season and have they done well they're top of the league with three games to go tied on points with Chelsea but 86 goals scored the majority of those being Marcus Rashford interestingly the Rashford versus Mbappe debate rages on yeah Manchester United nowhere to be seen quarterfinals to PSG Kylian Mbappe's main club in real life but no this time around season two of six with Manchester United of course again he can leave on his own last game of the season is with Liverpool though can Mbappe step up when his team needs him most they lose to West Ham, but they beat Southampton. They may be three points behind Chelsea. They're not. Chelsea won one and lost one as well. Manchester United win this game. They will effectively win the league title. However, the goal difference, they're only one ahead on goal difference. So if they win by one and Chelsea win by three, then Chelsea will win the title. Can Kylian Mbappe win his second league title in three years? No. No, he can't. Oh my God. Liverpool prevent Manchester United from winning the league title. Kylian Mbappe in tatters. Chelsea drew with Wolves, but it's enough because Liverpool beat Manchester United in Old Trafford and hand 
and Chelsea the Premier League title. That's a massive bottle job. Oh my God. And Mbappe just didn't show up. Top scorers in the league this season with 87 goals and they couldn't get one in 90 minutes at home against Liverpool. That is horrific. Having that said, Kylian Mbappe is one of the best players on the team. And despite the real upset that was this season, maybe next season at 21 years old, he'll have a bit more maturity and maybe be able to put away those games. The number 16 for Manchester United is getting better, but next season he should be the best player on the team or transferred or stunted. He could just stay this overall forever, but for some reason it's Mbappe. So I don't think that's going to happen. Now up to an 88 overall. This is Mbappe in a French jersey preparing himself for the FIFA World Cup of 2026. And this is the insanely OP and borderline illegal France team that'll probably win the World Cup. Let's be honest. Headliner Mbappe up top. Let's see if they can pull through. After bottling the Premier League title, they have New Zealand in the round of 16, which seems like an easy tie. Here we go. France versus New Zealand. Oh my God. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, okay. Okay. It's over. The World Cup's already over before it's even started. It's a round of 16 upset. It's New Zealand progressing and it's Kylian Mbappe falling short again. First, the final day of the Premier League. Then the round of 16 of the World Cup. Is Mbappe just going to be a bottle job? Is that what this is going to be? I really hope not. I really, really hope not. Hardly even starting for Manchester United, bottling the World Cup in the round of 16. Mbappe's barely a professional footballer, never mind one of the best players of all time. At this point, Ronaldo was smashing it in his career. 2006 World Cup with Portugal, he was absolutely flying. But for Kylian Mbappe, it's going to take a bit of extra time to find his feet in Manchester. That's okay though, still a long way to go. Still another couple of years with Manchester United before he makes his move to Real Madrid. It's Germany who win the World Cup. Germany over France, the age-old rivals, the Franco-Prussian War, World War One, World War Two, all the international matches they've played up to this point. They've been enemies for centuries and Germany take the World Cup off their hands. Mbappe will be in his prime in 2030. Will he have enough to take it off Germany and win the World Cup for his nation again? I think Mbappe has shattered the glass ceiling. I don't know how, but he's the best player at Manchester United. Pablo Gavi catching up as well. Marcus Rashford seems to have plateaued at 88. Granted, 88 overall is still very impressive. But Rashford's goal scoring tally has been incredible the last two years. Years. Now we're in Mbappe's third year at Manchester United. Can he be the top scorer? 18 goals, 25 for Rashford. No, he can't. The rating says he's better, but the goal scoring tally says Rashford is scoring more. Rashford also has more contributions, only by two, but it is more. So I wonder, is Kylian Mbappe really 91 overall? Rashford is outscoring him. Having that said, he's now starting and playing for Manchester United, which is excellent. But in his first full season playing football, Manchester United are seventh. Very poor season for them. They're not scoring a ton. They're not conceding a ton. They're just doing about average for seventh place in the league, which is so odd. West Ham second in the table. I don't know how that's happened, but United are only two points off fourth place and really only five points off West Ham. They could still climb the table with three games to go. What does their run in look like? They have Wolves, Bournemouth and Man City on the last day. Lord have mercy. Okay, Wolves first up. They get the 3-2 loss. We don't need that. We need a win against Bournemouth and we get it. Now Man City at home. This is the situation. They are now sixth and they're not within the reaches of the Champions League. Wow, look at that top five. If we were one, we'd have been on 62 points but that top five is insane we have man city to play the title winners they've lost two games all year and if we somehow beat them we may have a chance of getting into the europa league can mbappe do it against manchester city three nil win and it's a killian mbappe brace with a marcus rashford goal in there as well mbappe vital manchester united win the derby and they may have just secured themselves europa league football that's a huge win on the final day and they do they finish sixth that'll be enough for europa league next year chelsea spurs west ham all get champions league liverpool pike down to seventh and killian mbappe is the best player on this team, but is he the best player in the world? Based on the stats of this season, probably not, to be honest. He gets the same goal contributions as Marcus Rashford, I believe. They both end up on 34 for the season. However, is he the best player in the world? Is he Ballon d'Or worthy? If he's even with Rashford, I'm assuming there's got to be some other player in the world that may be better. However, we will go to the Ballon d'Or ceremony and we'll have a little look. Okay, Ballon d'Or nominees are in. Will Mbappe be featured? No, he's not. Okay, so he still has a way to go. Phil Foden, Rafa Leo, Erling Haaland and Vinicius Jr. Yeah, the elite of the elite of world football. Mbappe is good, but he's not quite great yet. And even when he gets nominated, he'll still have to win the award, which this year manages to go to Vinicius Jr. Wow, okay. Ballon d'Or is going to South America. Will it go to Paris one day? Maybe. Let's see if Mbappe can really hit his potential. This is now season four in Manchester. After this, we'll have two more years and then he will earn his big money move to Real Madrid. Well, I'm not sure if he'll earn it, but he'll get it anyway. 
anyway. Mbappe grows, Rashford maintains, but it, to be honest, it doesn't really matter. Rashford's taking the brunt of the goal scoring. Can Mbappe steal it back? No, he can't. Marcus Rashford gets more goals and more assists than Kylian Mbappe, and Mbappe is up to a 94 overall, which just goes to show you, you know, it's not all about your rating. Marcus Rashford fits the system a little bit better, and he's flying. But for Manchester United as a team, how are they doing? Standing second, one point behind City, and City to play in their very next game. No other team can really win the title. It's a two-horse race, and the, both of those horses are called Manchester. They're home. Here we go. The blue versus the red. Manchester City versus Manchester United. The most important Premier League match of the season, bar none. And let's make sure this team is perfect for it. Yeah, Lindelof starts at centre-back. No Antonio Rudiger anymore. Garnacho starts out on the wing. Mejri starts in midfield. Not the best Manchester United team I've ever seen, but it's a damn good one. Can Mbappe and Rashford carry them to the Premier League title? Here we go. It's a one-all draw. That keeps the tension all in this. United are still a point behind. Rashford gets the first goal. Haaland replies in the second half. And Mbappe is nowhere to be seen. Two games to go, though. Man City could slip up. Manchester United could slip up. Maybe Arsenal could sneak in there, but I doubt it. United to Chelsea. And it's a 3-2 loss against Chelsea. Now we're going to be struggling to win the title. And it's not over. Manchester City drew again. There's still time. United must beat Brentford. And they do. It's 1-0, though. It's not enough to win the title. Manchester City get a win on the final day of the season as well. They end up top of the league. They get a win against Bournemouth. 2-1 away at the Vitality. And them the Premier League title. 94 overall. Much higher rated than he is in real life in this game. And he's still two years before his actual age. In real life, he's 91 overall. 24. In this simulation, he's 22. 94 rated. But not even nodded for a Ballon d'Or. Not even the top scorer on his own team. Marcus Rashford holds that award. Is he really that good? Ronaldo in year four. I mean, damn, he was like cooking. So Mbappe's got two more years to prove himself. If he can. The year that Mbappe gets transferred to Real Madrid will be the year that the next World Cup is on in 2030, hopefully knocking Germany off their perch. But before then, of course, we're looking to achieve. Mbappe's simply too high rated to not be called up to the French team, so he'll definitely be there. But will he be the best player there? Will he be the top scorer for that French team? Will he drag them kicking and screaming to a World Cup trophy? We'll have to find out. Back at the Ballon d'Ors, will we get Mbappe nominated? Yes, we do. Wow, he's there. No sign of Marcus Rashford, but Kylian Mbappe gets his nomination. He looks so wrong in a Manchester United kit, by the way. Haaland and Foden return, but Darwin Nunez for PSG. I love the idea that PSG don't get Mbappe, but they pick up Darwin Nunez instead. But let's simulate a week. Let's go to the actual Ballon d'Or ceremony. Let's see if Mbappe can pick up the Ballon d'Or. Here we go. Ballon d'Or winner announced, and it's going to be Erling Haaland. Manchester City beat Manchester United in the league and in the Ballon d'Or race. Man City striker Erling Haaland takes the Ballon d'Or. Manchester United striker Kylian Mbappe is left empty-handed once again. Premier League title lost again. Ballon d'Or lost. World Cup bottled. I mean, all he's got to his name is the Portuguese League. <laughs> That's literally it. Season 5 at Manchester United. Kylian Mbappe, 96 overall. Ballon d'Or nominee, not a Ballon d'Or winner. Marcus Rashford still 88 overall, but now we have Frankie de Jong to worry about. And Garnacho, who spiked in overall. Also Marquinhos. Yeah, this team is much more settled. Bruno Fernandes is here again. I think he left and came back. Joe Gomez, Savio is here too. It's a weird Manchester United team, but let's see who the top scorer was. Kylian Mbappe versus Marcus Rashford goes finally Kylian Mbappe's way. 23 goals and 7 assists. He's the top scorer. He's the most with contributions by 4 over Marcus Rashford. Is it enough to do well in the Premier League though this season? They're 4th, so no. They're not going to win the Premier League title. They might hang on to 4th, but it's a really close race. Even Newcastle in ninth are only one win away, theoretically, from getting into 4th. If Brentford win, they'll have 56 points with 3 games to go. The Manchester United are not safe here, but their running looks like this. Everton, Newcastle, Luton, and the FA Cup final against Liverpool. Okay, so let's send this out straight away. Everton is a 4-2 win. Newcastle is a massive 2-1 win that gets them their Champions League spot if they beat Luton, and they do. Now they have an FA Cup final. Three wins on the bounce in the Premier League. That will leave them in the Champions League place, I imagine. Yes, they do. They end up fourth. Kylian Mbappe will play in the Champions League next season. Were they in like the Conference League this year? No, they weren't even in any European competitions, but Liverpool to play in Wembley Stadium versus Liverpool, the biggest rivals on the biggest stage in one of the biggest tournaments in world football. Let's make sure we're playing the right players though. Jimenez should be playing. Marquinhos isn't playing. Lindelof is. That's ridiculous. Let's just play Marquinhos. Frankie de Jong's also not playing. That's insane. This is just dumb. Just play the game. Liverpool versus United and it's United on penalties. Mbappe scores his. Rashford scores his. Garnacho misses, but it doesn't matter. Who scored in the game? It was Garnacho and Mohamed Salah. Nothing really for Mbappe or Rashford, which is kind of nice. I mean, neither of them scored, so I don't really care. Manchester United get themselves a little bit of silverware. So finally, they do win a final. On penalties, but they do win a final. In May, the most crucial month of the entire season, they end up winning everything. But I'm an idiot. They finished second in the league last season, which means they were in the Champions League and they got knocked out by PSG. 
2 1 on aggregate in the quarterfinals. That's not the only time they've been knocked out by PSG either, but they did knock out Bayern Munich in the round of 16. So they are doing well against the bigger clubs, just not flawless against the bigger clubs like they need to be to win the Champions League. But let's keep going. One more year at Manchester United, then the World Cup, and then we're moving to Madrid. Last season may have been the season that really changed Mbappe's career. He was the top scorer at his football club and he won a trophy as the main man. Will he get nominated again for the Ballon d'Or? Yeah, he will, alongside Haaland and Foden again, as well as his ex-teammate Lautaro Martinez, who's now back at Inter Milan. I don't know what he's doing. He's just tipping around Europe at different football clubs, but he's nominated for a Ballon d'Or. Can he win it? Or will it be Man City again? Or will it finally be Kylian Mbappe? Ballon d'Or winner, it's Erling Haaland. For the second year in a row, Mbappe is snubbed by Manchester City's main man. God, we're so close. We are so close, but he's not going to win a Ballon d'Or with Manchester United, just like Cristiano Ronaldo did in his final year. He's going to have to do it in Madrid. But listen, that's okay. That happens. Uh, different careers, but the same career path. Let's see if he can follow in Ronaldo's footsteps and win some big trophies before his Manchester United career is out. All right, I've just joined Manchester United. Let's see what's going on. Oh, okay. So Mbappe's not really gone up, but Rashford started declining as a player, which is kind of sad, to be honest. Our first main competition in this Manchester United team is seeing his career wind down or begin to wind down anyway. But Mbappe, quite the opposite. He's only getting started. He's 24 years old in the simulation now, which is just as old as he is in real life. And he's got 20 goals on the year, which is the most in the club. It's not a lot, to be honest, but it's more than anyone else. Garnacho 17, Savio 13, Marcus Rashford 29 games. I think Garnacho has taken his place. But damn, Rashford was good, man. Okay, Manchester United fourth in the Premier League. 11 points off the top, so they're not going to do that. But they're only five points off Liverpool, so that is definitely possible. In the Champions League, it's PSG again. It's PSG again. 4-3 on aggregate. They were 3-0 up from the first leg, then lost the second leg 4-0. That's just Mbappe stuff. Okay, brilliant. And he's fed up with all this Champions League bottling, almost kind of like Mbappe in real life. So he's going to go to Real Madrid to try and win the Champions League, which makes sense. He's 24 in this simulation, so he's going to Real Madrid. And in real life, he's 24 and he's going to Real Madrid in the summer. So, it, you know, it all adds up, really. Final game of the season against Manchester City, they do win despite having a pretty poor May. And they end up third in the Premier League. Wow, okay. But does Mbappe care about any of this? Ah, a little bit, but we're going to release him anyway. And just like that, Kylian Mbappe is a Real Madrid player. But who are his teammates? What's the situation here at Real Madrid? In real life, he'd be joined by Vinicius and Bellingham. In this simulation, Vinicius is here. Bellingham is nowhere to be seen. Fede Valverde is still here as well, but he's 31, getting older. Ducore is here, a Crystal Palace player. Matias De Ligt, Trent is here too. Luis Felipe at centre-back. Courtois is still going in net. Here is the best player in the world, Kylian Mbappe, or soon to be nominated as the best player in the world anyway. What I will do is make Vinicius Jr. a striker, because if he stays as a left winger, he'll just not play games. So I am going to make him a striker just to make sure he actually features. I hope that's okay. Who did the best at Real Madrid last season? No surprises. Vinicius Jr., 31 and 10. La Tassa beside him, got 20 and 5 as a 79 rated striker, which is pretty damn good. I mean, that's pretty impressive. And they finished top of La Liga, scoring 72 goals, the second most in the league behind Barcelona. The league season isn't actually over yet, though, but come on, we don't really care. There we go. They do win La Liga. 82 points. La Liga champions. Enough said. So Mbappe seems like he's in a pretty decent position here at Real Madrid. He may be finally able to push for some European silverware, just like Ronaldo did with Real Madrid. All time Real Madrid top scorer, all time Champions League top scorer, all that crap. I wonder if Mbappe could do that as well. But first, we have a World Cup to do. So give me the French job and give me that World Cup. We're not letting Germany win at this time. We're not letting England win it. We're not letting Portugal win it. Spain, any country, Argentina, Brazil, who aren't even in FIFA, but we're not going to let them win it anyway. Here we go. This is the French team. It's completely unfair. Mbappe up front, 96 overall. Now in the prime of his career, 24 years old, ready to take on world football, really, for the first time. Iceland first, 2-1 win. Qatar in a neutral venue is a 5-2 win. They're through the group stage. Croatia in the final game. This is top of the group versus second in the group. Kunde has been sent off. Does it matter? No, it doesn't. Leroy and Douai with the goals for France. So that's enough. They're through to the round of 16 with nine points from a possible nine. Who are they going to face in the 2030 World Cup? Of course, in real life, Ronaldo never won the World Cup with his country. He did win the Euros, not the World Cup. Let's see if Mbappe can do one better than Ronaldo with his career and win the biggest tournament in world football. Morocco. That's an interesting one. None of Mbappe's teammates or ex-teammates I can notice there. Let's see if they can get past the round of 16 where they fell in 26. They win in 2030 and it's a Kylian Mbappe brace with a Koundé goal as well. France into the World Cup quarterfinals. Realistically, where they should be. They're going to be playing against Spain. That's a very tough tie. Mbappe's ex-teammate for a number of years, Paulo Gavi, will be playing lightly. I don't know why he's not in that lineup, but he will be playing. Like, come on. And of course, Mbappe now playing in Spain with Real Madrid. Can he knock out Spain? Can he get to the World Cup? Yes, he can. 3-2. Usman Dembele, Camavinga, and Teo Hernandez from left back. It's enough for France. Bravo scores late on. It doesn't matter. Spain knocked out. France progress. And it's going to be Ireland. Oh my God. Let's go. Oh my God. Ireland made the World Cup semi-final. How good are we? Oh, we're 
we're actually terrible. I don't know how we got here. I hope Mbappe loses. I hope Mbappe loses. Yes! Haha, <laughs> Mbappe lost. <laughs> okay, that's pretty bad, actually. This is bad for the simulation because Ireland got absolutely destroyed. They had three shots all game and they scored all three of them. They're in the World Cup final. And who do they have to play against? Norway or America? I'll take that. Wait, Norway. That's Haaland. And Haaland made the World Cup final. Oh my God. Okay, France beat the USA. So Kylian Mbappe did end up with a third place medal. He probably got top scorer for France based on what I've seen. But did Ireland win the World Cup? Yes! Republic of Ireland world champions. Terrible for Mbappe. But actually, pretty good that they beat Norway in the final. So Haaland didn't win Ballon d'Ors and World Cups before Mbappe. Uh, yeah, Ireland world champions. Come on. Okay, this is terrible for Mbappe. <laughs> actually, it might not be the worst. Cristiano Ronaldo never won the World Cup. And I mean, he's already done better than Ronaldo in World Cups. Like up to this point, he scored in the knockout stage. That counts. But he's still yet to win the Ballon d'Or. And he's still yet to win the World Cup, of course. 2034, he'll be what? 28? Prime of his career. Let's see if he can win a World Cup then. It's a 2v2. It's Vinicius and Mbappe versus Haaland and Phil Foden. Who's going to win the Ballon d'Or in 2030? Of course, Haaland made the World Cup final. Didn't win it. That goes to Ireland, which I'll take to my grave. Brilliant. Let's go. But will Mbappe win his first ever Ballon d'Or? No. Haaland with a third in a row. He's a machine. He's an absolute machine. How are we going to beat him to this award? First season at Real Madrid. Top score is Vinicius. Second, Valverde. Mbappe third. Well, he has more assists than Valverde, so we'll give him second, but he should not be fighting for second. He should be fighting for first. Vinicius has now replaced Rashford as his enemy, but Vinicius is declining rapidly. 89 overall. He was 94 last season. He's gone down five already. And how good is this Real Madrid team? Like, really, how good is it? Because they have, like, a pretty weak midfield other than Valverde. Defensively, they're okay. Like, between, like, Molina, De Litt, and Arnold, they're really, really good. But, like, Marin is, like, not right. Goalkeeper? Goalkeeper isn't ideal. Let's see how they did in La Liga, though. Oh, my God, they're top. Five games to go. Five points clear of Barcelona. They are flying. And what about in other tournaments? They don't win the Supercopa. They don't win the Copa de España. Rangers win the Supercopa, and they're not in the Champions League. Knocked out by PSG. PSG again. How many times are we going to get knocked out by PSG in this video? I swear, that must be like four or five times. That's ridiculous. PSG getting revenge for me taking Mbappe off their hands. Anyway, final game of the season is against Girona. In real life, title fighters with Real Madrid. They beat Betis 2-0. That's a good sign. Continue with a draw against Valencia. And a draw against Espanyol they should really be beating. And a draw against Mallorca they should really be winning against. But they're top by three points. So they're pretty good. They should be okay. Girona! 2-1 win. There we go. Game over. Real Madrid win La Liga. So now Kylian Mbappe has won the league title in three different countries, I think. Has he won the Premier League? Did he win the Premier League? I don't think he won the Premier League, actually. I don't know if he did. Maybe he did. I don't remember. God, this video is bleak. <laughs> Not even remembering if Mbappe won the Premier League because he's just so bad. Like, it, it, this, this has gone very poorly. He's lost a lot of trophies. PSG has just been absolutely destroying him in every tournament ever. I say every tournament, it's the UCL uh, every every year, you know what I mean? So you may be asking yourself, what are the main problems that face Mbappe right now? He's like one of the best players in the world, but one, he's never won the Ballon d'Or. Two, he's not even the top scorer at his club at the moment. Vinicius Jr. is. And three, he still needs to win a World Cup at some point. Yeah, he's great. And yeah, his team is amazing. But getting knocked out by New Zealand and then the Republic of Ireland, I can speak for the Irish national team. We're terrible, okay? We should not be beating France in a World Cup semi-final, but we did. And that's kind of on the players of France, obviously. So they need to get their stuff together. And who's their best player? Kylian Mbappe. So it's on him to rally this team together and break through that glass ceiling. He needs to start winning stuff. Champions Leagues, World Cups, Ballon d'Ors. He's good enough, but is he willing to suffer for it? A couple more years with Real Madrid. He's still got a long time. Another eight years with Real Madrid. He's still got plenty of time to prove himself, but I don't know. I really don't know. Not gone great so far for Kylian Mbappe. Ballon d'Or nominees through the door. Do we have Kylian Mbappe? We do. It's a 2v2 again. The exact same nominees. We've had Haaland and Foden every year, and we've had Vinicius more or less every year as well. Is the Ballon d'Or going to Madrid, or is it going to Manchester? Ballon d'Or win has been announced, and it's finally Kylian Mbappe. First Ballon d'Or on the board, officially recognized as the best player on the planet. It's only taken him, what, eight years? Which is actually pretty decent shooting. Ronaldo had already had a Ballon d'Or by this point with Manchester United, but as it stands, Kylian Mbappe has one Ballon d'Or on the board. Ronaldo got five. Can Kylian Mbappe get four more to equal Ronaldo, or maybe even get past him? He has plenty of years at Real Madrid to do it, and he has the benefit of not having to play against Lionel Messi as well. So, let's see if Haaland can stay away and let's see if Mbappe can win more Ballon d'Ors. It's so interesting to 
see some of these older players decline, like Courtois down to 77. So now Lunin is starting in nets for Real Madrid. Molina as well, the World Cup hero, is just getting worse and worse and worse. And Valverde has begun his decline as well. Vinicius hasn't actually gone down any overall, though. I think it's because I made him a striker. He got worse. Either way, Real Madrid are still good. They're top of La Liga by three points over Sevilla. But how are they doing in the Champions League? Real Madrid, famous for their Champions League escapades, still not in the semi-final. Brighton are there. Real Madrid are not. They got knocked out in the round of 16 to Inter Milan. Finally, it's a different team to Paris Saint-Germain, though. If you can call that a relief, I don't know if you can. But has Mbappe finally conquered Madrid in terms of goal scoring? No, he hasn't. Vinicius, only two goals off this time, though. But Vinicius, once again, taking the goal scoring mantle. Top goals and top assists for the Brazilian. Kylian Mbappe, yeah, yeah, it's just not quite good enough for him. The one-time Ballon d'Or winner is not even the top scorer on his own football team. But listen, stats don't tell the whole story. Mbappe is still an excellent football player. And Real Madrid are still winning football games like crazy. They've won the last four in a row, including El Clasico, by the way. Final game of the season, they win against Villarreal. The last five in a row, God. Plus Atletico Madrid, they beat. That's six. And they went flawless in April. Last time they lost was March, where they lost every single game in the month. Jesus, they are hot and cold. Temperamental Kylian Mbappe up front, but God, that card looks so good. Oh my. They scored the most goals. They conceded the joint least. <laughs> yeah, a really good team. But Champions League falling short again. This time not PSG, but still. Mbappe yet to win that Champions League, yet to get that European glory that he probably deserves. Ronaldo won it with Manchester United and then a bunch of times with Real Madrid. Now Kylian Mbappe needs to at least get one on the board. Can Mbappe get consistent with Ballon d'Or victories? He's nominated. It's him versus two Inter Milan players and a Chelsea player, but one of them is Vinicius Jr. He's left Real Madrid. He's gone to Milan alongside Gonzalo Ramos and then Joe Felix with Chelsea. Gonzalo Ramos and Joe Felix are a bit random. Honestly, I think this is a two-horse race. I think this is Vinicius Jr. versus Kylian Mbappe. Who's going to win the Ballon d'Or? Will it be the man who's won it last year or will it be the man who won the Ballon d'Or the whole way back when we first checked? Ballon d'Or winner, it's Kylian Mbappe. Two years in a row. There we go. Now he's on his own. He's not been held back by anyone else. He can just go and score as many goals as he can. Kylian Mbappe, double Ballon d'Or winner. Champions League. League. Oh, still no Champions League football for Real Madrid, but Mbappe, 96 overall. Now strike partners with Alvaro. I'm not quite sure who he is. He's from Uruguay, though, so maybe he's the next Luis Suarez. Oh, I don't know. Stats, 23 goals. Yes, the top scorer. Barely over Alvaro, who got more assists, so actually got more goal contributions than Mbappe. Also, Camori Dumbia from Mali was pretty good at the whole football thing as well. Mbappe will be at Real Madrid for a very, very long time. This is what, his third season here? He will leave here at 33 years old. He's now 27, so he's going to have his whole prime here. Real Madrid are down in fourth, miles off the pace where Barcelona are setting. 11 points clear from Real Madrid, they are. Supercopa, Villarreal. Copa de España, Valencia, they lost in the final. Mbappe again. Champions League, obviously not there. Round of 16 again. Yeah, Frankfurt this time. Yeah, at least it's not PSG. I actually don't care. That's just as long as it's not PSG, I'm pretty happy. I do want to have a quick look though. We know that Vinicius is with now Inter Milan. Maybe some of the current superstars. Jude Bellingham is with Juventus. Camavinga, Newcastle United. Oh, wow. Chiuameni is a Wolverhampton. And Wanderers player. Wow. Edir Militao is getting old, but he's with PSG, the team that knock out Mbappe every single year. And hey, Federico Valverde is still at Real Madrid, but Kylian Mbappe dominating the goal scoring, but not really dominating the league. Top scorer in the Liga this season was Araujo for Barcelona. I think he's an auto generated player. Mbappe down in seventh with 15 goals. Still a couple games to go yet, though, including an El Clasico against Barcelona. Let's fly through this. Elche at home is a 2 0 win. Espanyol away is a 2 1 win. Barcelona, they win the El Clasico and they beat. Valladolid. Four wins from a possible four in May. Once again, they're killing it in May. They're up to fourth. Oh, they're still in fourth, I should say. Top of the league is now Villarreal. Real Madrid cannot overtake Barcelona, but they can confirm their Champions League spot. Even actually, no, they're already confirmed in Champions League. This game literally doesn't matter. They got a four win over Celta Vigo. They move up to third within reach of Barcelona if there was a couple more games to go, but there's not. Villarreal win the title. Mbappe still left a little bit empty. Not the top scorer in La Liga this season. Not the title winner. Actually, the only thing he really won was the Ballon d'Or, and that was it. I mean, the Ballon d'Or was great and all, but like, it's not the same. No team awards. That's basically what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Waiting for this Real Madrid rebuild to happen though. They like the entire left side of that Real Madrid team is just like average to garbage. So they really need to just revamp everything. Can Mbappe go back to back to back? I believe Ronaldo won four Ballon d'Ors in a row. Kylian Mbappe currently has a few as well. We have Gabriel Martinelli, Kylian Mbappe, Erling Haaland, and our first auto generated player. Can Mbappe get his third Ballon d'Or in a row? Yes, he can. Mbappe wins a Another Ballon d'Or. He's really catching Ronaldo. I believe this is his third Ballon d'Or. I could well have miscounted because I'm a bit thick, but I think Mbappe's got three, which is good. Individually, incredible. On a team basis, not so great. That's not really his fault, though. We, like, we need Real Madrid to make the good transfers and stuff like that. But the longer Mbappe 
plays for Real Madrid, the more likely he is to play with world-class teammates. So let's just pray they make some good transfers and that Mbappe can finally get some Champions League glory. No transfers made and all of the crapper players are getting even worse. This is bad. This is actually really bad for Kylian Mbappe. How are we going to get over this? He doesn't move to Juventus to actually join forces with Jude Bellingham for another couple of years. He's still got five more years after this one with Real Madrid. But they are top of La Liga, not scoring a massive amount of goals and conceding like an okay amount. I don't know how they're top, but they just are. Champions League. Oh, they're in the Champions League semi-final, finally. And it's an El Clasico Champions League. Finally, Kylian Mbappe. This is the furthest he's ever gotten in the Champions League. Barcelona to play against. 2-1 down, granted. Let's see if he can somehow claw this back. So these are the type of games that, never mind, Champions League legends make club legends in the burnabout, under the lights. Barcelona to play. Champions League semi-final. No bigger game in world football for Kylian Mbappe's Real Madrid. Can they pull through when they need to? No, they get smashed. Oh, that would have been so good. If Mbappe clawed that back, that would have been legacy defining. But no, Carvajal, Palacios and Nusa just end Real Madrid's Champions League campaign. 5-2 on aggregate, frankly battered across the two legs and Spurs to play in the Champions League final. That's a free pass as well. But no, they'll have to settle for the league if they can get it. Loss against Granada isn't the best. Now left with Valencia on the last day. They get that 3-1 win that they need and they get the La Liga title. Any other trophies for Real Madrid? No Supercopa. No Copa de España either. They've done terribly in the domestic cups as well. But is Mbappe the best goal scorer at Real Madrid? Yes. Only by three goals. Alvaro is way exceeding his overall in terms of goal scoring output. Kylian Mbappe 27 and 11. He's great at football. Three-time Ballon d'Or winner. Probably soon to be four. But can he finally win himself the World Cup? Here we are. 2034 World Cup time. And this is the group. Qatar, USA and Finland to go. Frankly, it should be at least seven points out of nine. Realistically, nine out of nine. And they get the win over Qatar. America, they lose to. So they need a result against Finland. 4-0 demolition will work. And it's Argentina in the round of 16. That's a tough tie. This is the default French team, just as I've come into it here. And Dubois is starting up front instead of Kylian Mbappe. And this Leroy guy. Oh my God. Okay, though, because we can play Mbappe on the left. And we can also play this Leroy guy at Cam. We really want to fit in Dubois. Is there anyone here that's particularly good that should definitely be playing? 87 overall is the highest rated sub that we have. And he doesn't fit into the team. We're going to have to play too many at centre back, but we'll make it work. This team is simply good enough to win the World Cup. But can they do it? They'll have to be this very strong Argentine team to do it first. Mbappe versus Argentina. Round of 16, and it goes France's way. Camavinga and Dubois, both with goals. Nothing for Mbappe. Yes, but we're into the quarterfinals of the World Cup, and that's what matters most. Denmark to play. I'll take that. That seems like an easy enough tie. Of course, Denmark do have quality in terms of Rasmus Hoyland and players like that, but it should definitely be winnable. This is what their team looks like. Yes, Hoyland is there, but I can't say it's the most ridiculous Danish team I've ever seen. No Zaire Emery for this game. We should still be okay, and we are. 3-0 win. Mbappe with a goal. Bui and Leroy with goals as well. Into the World Cup semi-final, where we stumbled and fell last time around. It's Italy to play against. We lost to the Republic of Ireland last time, which is absolutely terrible. I can't believe that happened. So let's see if Italy can stumble France once again. Here we go. Oh, goal. It's happened again. It's happened again. France out. In extra time again, by the way. Dubois with the goal for France. Raspadori leveled it all up. Nothing but going into extra time. Raspadori and Coppola with the goals. Italy win 3-1. France at the World Cup semi-final again in Mbappe's prime. 28 years old. The best he's ever been and likely the best he ever will be is out of the World Cup in the semi-finals. England progressed to the finals. Norway knocked out as well. They'll play in the third place playoff. Haaland versus Mbappe and it goes Mbappe's way. On penalties granted, but Mbappe takes that third place medal for the second tournament in a row. Not the best. Not the worst, but really, like, you want the trophy, especially for a France team that ridiculously strong. But look, World Cup is gone. Four more years until the next one, which will likely be Mbappe's last chance at the World Cup, and it will also be his second last year at Real Madrid. Let's go to the Ballon d'Or first up and see if Mbappe can get four in a row. In order to win the Ballon d'Or, we need to get nominated. Yes, in order to score, you need to shoot. Michael Owen, eat your heart out. Is Mbappe here? Yes, he is. Alongside Felipe Lima, auto-generated guy, but Erling Haaland again, as well as Kvitsa Kvaratskhelia is still at Napoli and is now nominated for a Ballon d'Or for the first time that we have seen. Mbappe wants four in a row. Ronaldo did it. Messi did it. Can Mbappe now do it as well? With Ronaldo's career path, it's going to be Kylian Mbappe with a fourth Ballon d'Or. There we have it. There's the talent and the success that we were looking for. Kylian Mbappe, a Ballon d'Or winner for the fourth successive year, but still yet to win the Champions League. Cristiano Ronaldo is probably the best Champions League player ever. Kylian Mbappe, on the other hand, hasn't even reached the final yet. Got to the semi-final, lost both legs against his biggest rival, Barcelona. He simply needs to do better than that before he leaves Real Madrid. A club with that much Champions League pedigree will not be happy if the best player in the world comes in, sits around, doesn't win a Champions League for 10 years, and then leaves. Back at Real Madrid, honestly, I don't think there's any marquee signings, and players are getting worse. Trent is down to a 78. Delit is 
86 overall. I'm getting worried that this Real Madrid team is falling off a cliff to never recover. I mean, Mbappe's still there and still doing really, really well, but I'm just getting a bit concerned. And I think that's relatively justified, especially based on the league performance this year, where we're down in eighth place, which is horrendous for Real Madrid. But let's forget about that for a moment. Top scorer this year is Mbappe. Alvaro just behind again. This is kind of scaring me now. But yes, Mbappe, he's doing pretty well at football. Still another four years here at Real Madrid, but eighth in the league is just not good enough. Miles off Barcelona at the top, 22 points to be exact. But they do win the Super Copa for the first time. No Copa de España though, again, they get knocked out by Osasuna in the round of 16. And again, no Champions League. They get knocked out uh, by, who did they get knocked out by? Oh my God, they just not knocked out in the group stage. They're in the Europa League and they're not in that either. They got knocked out in the round of 16 to Wolves. Wolverhampton Wanderers, literally. Bro, that's so bad. Mbappe, Mbappe, how do you do this? Look at the points though. Everyone looking on the screen now is on 49 points apart from Atletico on 48. Really close. Oh my God, it's so close. We could actually get ourselves up into the Champions League places with five games to go. We could do it. Okay, a little glimmer of hope now. I mean, if we're going to win the Champions League, we need to at least qualify. We beat Huesca, who are bottom of the table. Betis beat us. Barcelona at home. We win the El Clasico and we draw against Celta Vigo. And now we have Sevilla, which is actually a big game because they are up the table. We are now in seventh and Sevilla are in third. If we win this game, we could actually somehow qualify for the Champions League. Come on, boys. 2-0 win. Is it enough? Uh, okay, we get Conference League football for next year. That's pretty good. Goal difference keeps us out of the Europa League. But if we get into the Conference League, we should at least win it. We are Real Madrid. We are far too rich to just be struggling in the Conference League. We should be destroying that league. Can Mbappe go for five? He is not nominated. Wow, that's a turn up for the books. We have, what, two auto-generated players, Erling Haaland and Ansu Fati, all Ballon d'Or nominated. Mbappe wins four on the bounce and doesn't even get nominated for the fifth one. That's insane. And surprise, surprise, the Ballon d'Or winner is Erling Haaland again. The man is relentless, but Mbappe has fallen short going for five. Ronaldo got five in his career. Will Mbappe ever get his fifth? I think finally this Real Madrid team has some reinforcements. Now, it's not particularly amazing, so don't get your hopes up, but it is a little bit better than it was. Vanner is here now. Mbappe is 96 rated, and he's better than everyone else on this team by 10 overall. But let's see if he's the top scorer or if Alvaro has overtaken him this season. It's Mbappe, 29 and 14. But he has crossed the 30 years of age mark. Three more years at Real Madrid, and they're third in the table. They can still win the title, though. Sevilla are top. No Copa de España, no Super Cup, and no Champions League either. Europa League, nothing. Conference League, they got knocked out. They must have. No, they're not even in it. Were they in the Europa League? Yes, they topped their group. Got knocked out in the round of 16 by Ajax Amsterdam. Terrible season for Kylian Mbappe. Let's see top scores in the league, though. Did he top the charts? No. Orban for Sevilla does. Mbappe is currently third. There is still time, though. Mbappe could take the goal-scoring record, and he could take the La Liga title. Barcelona, second last game of the season as well. They're not easy fixtures. They beat Osasuna. Now Atletico Madrid, they win against. Espanyol at home, they get a 2-1 win. Barcelona away in the Camp Nou, and it's a 1-0 win as well. Brilliant run of fixture for them. Now they have Vallecano on the final day of the season. They are top of La Liga, joint on points with Sevilla, and they must win this final game against Vallecano. And they get a one-all draw. Is it enough? No, it's not. Mbappe bottles the league for like the millionth time in a row. I hate him so much. The challenge of the Champions League remains, and it looms over his head like a dark cloud. Maybe when he gets to Juventus, he can win it. I don't think he's going to win it at Real. Three years to go here. His main challenge at Real Madrid is getting into the Champions League and pushing as far as he can. One semi-final, one or two quarter-finals, and the rest round of 16 to PSG. Uh, poor from Mbappe so far. He's 30 now. He's getting old. He needs to win the Champions League soon. Mbappe did not get nominated for the Ballon d'Or last year. Will he get nominated this time around? Yes, he does. Alongside Gift Orban, Erling Haaland, and Felipe Lima. The only auto-generated player there is Felipe Lima. Gift Orban is a really interesting one. I don't reckon he'll win the Ballon d'Or. I reckon it'll be Erling Haaland or Kylian Mbappe. Haaland's won the last Ballon d'Or. Mbappe won the four before that. And it's going back to France. Kylian Mbappe takes the Ballon d'Or. His fifth award in six years. He's equaled Ronaldo's Ballon d'Or record. Let's see if he can get one more to take him past Ronaldo's five and maybe push on for Messi's eight. The first of our final three years in Real Madrid. No Champions League animation playing. They've not made it. Knocked out in the quarters to RB Leipzig. So close to the semis. Any new signings? Anything notable? Not particularly, to be honest. Bella Kotchap, class. Other than him, not really. It's a pretty solid team, actually, but like it's not exactly world beating. But how are they doing in La Liga standings? They are top by four points. Five games to go, though. But they're not safe quite just yet. Super Copa, no good. Copa de España, no good either. Super Cup goes to Sevilla. And then Leipzig in the semi final of the Champions League. Once again, did Mbappe top the goal scoring charts for Real Madrid? Yes, he did. 26 goals, 24 Alvaro with 10 assists. Mbappe only beats Alvaro in goals and assists by a single point, but a single goal, I suppose. And he's 31. Two more.
more years for Kylian Mbappe at Real Madrid. Zero Champions Leagues to his name. Zero World Cups to his name. What about top scorer in the league? It goes to Cuchas for Espanyol. Mbappe is in fourth. So consistently scoring goals, but not quite at the top of the league just yet. Atletico Madrid on the final day. A Madrid derby. That's brilliant to see. Osasuna beat Real Madrid though. As do Almeria. Real Madrid now tumbling down the order. Mallorca get a result as well. They beat Cadiz, but three losses on the bounce may put them out of contention. They're second. Espanyol are five points clear. The league is over. Espanyol are going to be Spanish champions. Real Madrid bottle it once again. Final day of the season, they get a one-all draw for good measure. Not only do they not finish top, they finish fourth, scraping into Champions League places. And Kylian Mbappe really has to start proving himself at some point. He's older now, so you would expect maybe a more experienced Kylian Mbappe guiding his team through these tougher games. But no, they're getting absolutely, categorically smashed. And just when you think they're going to win a trophy, they go ahead and lose three games on the bounce and put themselves out of contention. Kylian Mbappe needs to learn how to win trophies. Maybe he'll be able to do it at Juventus. Let's have a quick look at who Juventus have now. They do have Paolo Gavi, 90 overall. They also have this Hugh Jenkins guy at centre-back, 85 overall. Gio Reyna, 83. They have a decent midfield, it looks like. Sean Small out on the wing. Fabio Tavares, Matias Tell. Okay, so they have pretty good strikers, but nobody incredible. They also don't have Jude Bellingham. He's gone again. Jude Bellingham, where's he gone? He's gone to Manchester City. That's just not fair. But let's see. Mbappe, two more years to go, and then he's gone to Juventus. Or he transfers himself. He hasn't actually made any transfers on his own. He hasn't taken Destiny into his own hands at all yet. Let's see if maybe he can do that before we even get him away to Juventus. Ballon d'Or nominees. Can Mbappe win his sixth? Well, he is nominated right down the end alongside three random generated players. Yes, it's Mbappe versus AI. And to be honest, he's done pretty decently against actual people. Normal like Haaland and Vinicius and stuff like that. Maybe not in the start, but at the end. Can he win against AI? Yes, he can. He takes his sixth Ballon d'Or in seven years and he takes him beyond Cristiano Ronaldo. One man left, Lionel Messi to beat. Can he get two more Ballon d'Ors to reach Lionel Messi? Also at the end of this year, there is a World Cup to be played. His final chance at World Cup glory. Can he snag it? All right, back at Real Madrid. Mbappe's still 96, by the way. He hasn't grown really at all. Have you picked up anyone else? We got another cam and other than that, not really. Top scorer this year was Kylian Mbappe, but Vanner only two behind from cam. I don't know why we're not scoring goals this year. This is Mbappe's second last year at Real Madrid. Next year will be his last. We will send him on to you Juventus then. Real Madrid, sixth in La Liga. Very poor season for them. Top of the league is Barcelona. Absolutely miles. 28 points ahead of Real Madrid. But Champions League semi-final. Here we go. We're 1-0 down from the first leg. I don't know how we've made it this far, but we're here. Like the team that we have just isn't really good enough to be in a Champions League semi-final. But listen, I can't complain at all. Real Madrid versus Arsenal. Here we go. And we're 1-0 down. This is the Arsenal team we're playing against as well. Rooney Bargy on the wing. Martinelli there as well. Zaire Emery in midfield. Baldi at fullback. And the rest are also generated. Can Mbappe reach a Champions League final? Nope. No, he can't. Next. Whatever. Fine. Cool. Okay. Right. Perfect. Oh, and it's Wolves. Oh my God. It's Arsenal Wolves in the Champions League final. I actually hate this. I hate this so much. The fact that Kylian Mbappe struggled so much is just so frustrating. Two Champions League semi-finals. Both of them lost. One to Arsenal. One to Barcelona. We have a World Cup now. The final World Cup of Kylian Mbappe's career. Will he have the minerals to win the biggest prize in world football? He hasn't done it so far. That's not to say he won't. 32 years old. Next year's his last year at Real Madrid and this is his final FIFA World Cup. And if you thought this France team was good already, you should check it out now. Mbappe's been moved out to the wing because Leroy and now this Laurent guy exists. Fav out on the wing as well is amazing. Zaire Emery holding it down in midfield alongside Meyer. A left back 88 overall. His name is Maurice. Very French. Weak point here has to be right back. But other than that, I mean, we're absolutely amazing. Again, World Cup potential on top of World Cup potential. Finland, Denmark and Argentina in the group stage. That's tough. I predict to Ryan. 3 1 against Finland. That's a good start. And we draw against Denmark, so we should be through. But we should really also be beating Argentina. And we draw 1 all. Five points from the group stage. I'll take that. Let's go to the knockout stage and hopefully win these next four games to win us the World Cup. Who do they have in the round of 16? America. Okay. That's winnable. Definitely winnable. And that's not to say America are bad in these simulations. As a matter of fact, they are actually pretty good in these simulations. But it is to say that Kylian Mbappe should be winning this game. Can he do it? 4 1. Big win. Devo, Leroy, Fav, and Fav again. Nothing for Kylian Mbappe thus far. However, there's still plenty of time. Three games to go. Can Mbappe guide his nation? Argentina knock out Scotland on penalties. And we had Argentina in the group and we did draw with them. Draw will not be enough this time around. We must win against Argentina. A replay of the 2022 World Cup final. France versus Argentina. Who's going to take it? It's going to be Argentina. And again, in extra time, Mbappe falls flat on his face. He scores in normal time. The Sanchez equalizes and in extra time, Guerra takes the game. France knocked out of the World Cup in extra time on three consecutive occasions. Kylian Mbappe, frankly, a world
World Cup failure. And that'll be the end of Kylian Mbappe's international career. With In this simulation, by the time he gets to 36 years old, they just won't call him up for the national team because he's just simply too old, even if his rating is somewhat good enough. Besides, the France team, the standard, the bar is so high, he's going to start regressing pretty soon after anyway. So let's go to his final year in Real Madrid and let's see how he does before we ship him off to Juventus for three years. 2038 nominees through the door. Any sign of Kylian Mbappe? No. It's all AI players. I don't know any of these guys. Sean Small, though, uh, he's with Juventus, so Mbappe will see him next year with Juve. But for the moment, no Ballon d'Or for Mbappe. He's on six, and he may remain on six forever. Let's go to May. See what he does with Real Madrid, probably terribly, and then put him, hopefully, with Juventus to finally win some European silverware. That's the problem we have. We can't win the Champions League. How are we going to solve it? With Juventus. And just as this Real Madrid team actually kind of starts getting a little bit good, uh, Mbappe's about to head out the door. However, how are they doing in La Liga? Let's have a quick look. Standings, third in the league within a shot of the title, though. What about the Supercopa? Nope, they lost to Barcelona. What about the Copa de España? Finally, yes, they win. Good, okay. I think that might be the first time I've actually ever won it. No Champions League action for them, though. What about Europa League? Nothing. What about Conference League? Embarrassing. Zero European success for Kylian Mbappe. Zero European finals for Kylian Mbappe. He didn't even reach any finals to bottle. Goals, Alvaro with the most. Schumacher with the second most. And Kylian Mbappe with the third most. I feel ill. And he's still 95 overall. Yes, he has regressed by one overall, but he's 95 rated. Come on. A draw against Granada. A draw against Car. I actually don't think I've ever seen that team before. Alaves beat them. A draw against Atletico Madrid. They haven't won in May at all, but they beat Espanyol. Finally. Have they won the league? I can tell you already. They definitely haven't, but it doesn't matter. Kylian Mbappe is gone. Give me him. Where is he? 95 overall. One of the world's best. Release him from his contract and send him to Juventus. And there we go. Kylian Mbappe is now a Juventus player. Let's have a quick look at the team that he's going to be playing with. So unsurprisingly, he'll start up front alongside Nuno Tavares. It's not Nuno Tavares. It's a guy called Tavares. On one wing, it will be small. And in the center mid, it will be Zimmerman and Gavi. Wow, this team is solid. You can actually play Matias Talent on the wing as well. They do have a 68 rated center back starting though as their captain. I think I'd rather play 71 overall Konate. Or just do this actually. That probably works best. There we go. You can see the team. And yes, this is definitely Champions League quality. Although the keeper is a bit weak. And that is a very important position in FIFA simulation. They did finish second in the Serie A this season, but they were nine points off Inter Milan. But they are in the Champions League this year, which is good. What about the last year? How did they do in the Champions League? They got knocked out in the round of 16 to Munchen Gladbach. Oh God, this is scary. Please don't happen again. I can't deal with this. Kylian Mbappe is back nominated for the Ballon d'Or alongside three auto-generated players, completely AI. And is he going to win it? Ballon d'Or announced it's going to go to a random AI person. Is this Janssen? Is that his name? No, Jay Howe wins the Ballon d'Or for Valencia. Six for Mbappe. He couldn't quite make it seven, but he's still getting nominated for the Ballon d'Or, so we will keep checking. Let's go to May and see how Juventus are doing. God, it's so weird to say Juventus now. I'm too used to Real Madrid. Here we are in Juventus, and I am so hopeful. I'm so hopeful for this season. We did lose both of our attackers, Matias Tell and the other guy. Small is still here, though. I wonder if he's playing up top. Maybe he is. That would be ideal. Also, we have a goalkeeper, Berger, 88 overall. Okay, this team actually wants to build players and get good at football. That's important. Is it enough to win the Serie A, though? No, they're down in fifth, but they are in the Champions League, but are they still in the tournament? Yes, they are. And they're 3-1 up against Sporting Lisbon. Mbappe's first club are about to get knocked out by Mbappe's current club. However, Manchester City are in the other semi-final, so that does make it a bit more difficult. 3-1, though, in the first leg, we should be able to close this out, and we do. 5-1 in total. We're into the Champions League final. Man City to play in the neutral venue. Can we finally have an Mbappe Champions League title? I'm praying for it. We've had so many issues in this simulation. Real Madrid have been a pain. Manchester United have not been better, but yes, in our first season in Juventus, Kylian Mbappe has made it to the promised land. Kylian Mbappe is finally in the Champions League final. All of the issues that we faced, it's Jude Bellingham, who would have been his team at Real Madrid versus Kylian Mbappe. It's Mbappe. Here we go. Juve versus Man City. Please, Mbappe. Yes! Yes! He wins the Champions League. A goal in the final. Kylian Mbappe is a Champions League winner. Oh my God. Finally. That's amazing. Cristiano Ronaldo, when he went to Juventus, did not win a Champions League title. But in Mbappe's first year, he takes the trophy for himself. And a goal in the final. He didn't bottle this one. He didn't bottle the biggest game of his career. He is a European champion. Finally, for Juventus. All of the trouble. All of the issues. They're all gone by the wayside. Finally. My God. Oh my God. Finally. And let me guess. Top score. And it was Kylian Mbappe. 26 and 13. He got the most assists as well. He's banned for some reason. But we'll let that slide. What a player. What a performance. Finally. It comes together for him. He deserves it to be fair. Finally. A Champions League winner at 34 years of age. He's still got two more years at Juventus. Can he somehow manage to go back to back? He won't match Ronaldo's Champions League record. But will he at 
least be able to make the ground up even a little bit. 2040 Ballon d'Or. No, Kylian Mbappe is not here. His ex-teammate Tavares is though, but no, the rest are all auto-generated players. No Mbappe to be seen. And honestly, that could be the end of the Ballon d'Or for Mbappe, which is a bit worrying. We'll, we will, of course, check it throughout his time at Juventus and all that, but he may be finished. Oh, the fall off, the fall off from Mbappe. 89 overall now. Was he even top scorer last season? He was. Oh my, 28 and 14 from. Cannot be complaining about that at all. No Ballon d'Or nod though, which is a bit of a shame. Still doing it at the top at the best. Six overall for Juventus. Number one is Inter Milan. They're top of the Serie A. No EA Sports FC Super Cup or Coppa Italia either. They did win the Super Cup though after winning the Champions League, but they're not back in the semi-final. Interestingly, Manchester United are, which is where Kylian Mbappe will be headed very soon. They lost in the quarters to AC Milan. That's devastating. Only 1-0 on aggregate as well. The most Italian score ever, just defending the entire game. But in terms of age, Kylian Mbappe is now 35. So yes, next season, he'll be going to Manchester United. But for now, he remains at Juventus. He'll spend one year at Man United and then he'll be off to Al Nasser for the end of his career. Still a long way to go between now and then though. Who is the top scorer in the league actually this year? Because it could well have been Kylian Mbappe. It wasn't. Ibrahim from Monza with 20. Mbappe, 18 goals at 35 years old is nothing to cry about. Yeah, Ballon d'Or. No sign of Mbappe. I think his Ballon d'Or career is over. Six Ballon d'Ors in the books. Hardly any early on, but as the career went, he got six in seven years, which is simply exceptional. So yeah, Mbappe, no Ballon d'Ors anymore. 2041, his career is beginning to wind down. Don't be surprised if he doesn't even make it to Al Nasser, but I could see it happening. Look, he's won one Champions League, which I'm extremely grateful for. Zero World Cups. And yeah, uh, is it better than Ronaldo's career? Well, let's go to the end of the simulation and see first. And in Mbappe's last year with Juventus, he's 86 rated, a great veteran, and in the Europa League. This is a sad day for professional football. Having that said, it's Atletico Madrid. That's a fairly tough tie. That could genuinely be a Champions League game. Juventus are sixth, though, in the Serie A. Thank God this is Mbappe's last year here. They lose in the Cup. They're in the Coppa Italia final, though, against Atalanta. And they have to stave off Atletico Madrid to win in the Europa League. 2-1 in the first leg. 5-3 in total on aggregate. Manchester United in the final. One of Kylian Mbappe's first clubs, and he loses. No Champions League for Juve next year. They will get Europa League, though, because they won the Coppa Italia. But we don't really care. Kylian Mbappe, where are you? Come here. Release him. Let's go to Manchester United and let's sign him back for one season with the Red Devils. And this is the Manchester United team that Mbappe inherits. He doesn't actually start up front. I think Laurent probably does. He might squeeze in somewhere on the wing, but I have a funny feeling he might get zero football with Manchester United. Anyway, let's simulate a year and see how he does. Where is Mbappe? Is Mbappe here? Mbappe. He is here. 83. A great veteran and not retiring yet, which means he will go to the Saudi League. That's right. This Man United team is actually, no joke, really, really good. I'm very impressed, actually, with how strong this team is. Let's have a look at the top score for this season, and I'll have a good guess that it's not Mbappe. It's not. It's Bruno Moraes out on the left wing. Garnacho's there as well, as well as Laurent. Garnacho's 38. Oh my god. Mbappe got 25 games, though, and 9 goals, which, hey, for a 37-year-old, pretty damn good. We take that. And at his only season at Manchester United, they top the Premier League. Oh my god. No FA Cup, though, which is a bit of a shame, or Carabao Cup either. Lost the Super Cup final, and no Champions League. There was a chance, but guess who it is? Always. Always PSG with Mbappe. Absolutely livid. Well, he won't be playing against PSG when he's playing for uh, Al Nasser out in the Saudi League anyway. But let's finish out this Premier League season and get to June. Did they win the Premier League? Yes, they did. 78 points. Premier League champions. Okay, let's go and release Kylian Mbappe. Where is he? Here he is. Mbappe retiring at the end of the season. We can't even release him. Oh my God. Just like that. It's over. He has actually no games of football left to play. He was the third top goal scorer at the age of 37, which is pretty damn impressive. And he's gone from football. He's finished. Who had a better career? Let me know in the comments. And thank you for watching this video.